Hey guys, happy Sunday. Welcome back to Speaking 360. Another great quote for you this week, uh, this time from Calvin Coolidge. He said, nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. This is a longer quote that I've broken down, actually, so that we can go through it and look at the different parts of it. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. But then he goes on to kind of dispel some myths that we have about things that perhaps we think are more important than persistence, like talent, for example. But he says, no, talent won't do it. Talent won't do it because there's nothing more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Well, what about genius then? Sorry, genius is more important than persistence. Nope, unrewarded genius is almost a problem. Mm, okay, well, that kind of rings true as well, doesn't it? Well, what about education? Surely that's the most important thing. Education is important, but education is not more important than persistence when it comes to success. The world is full of educated derelicts, as is proof. And then the quote kind of wraps up by saying, persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. So persistence is so important. And so if you kind of think about this, you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah, you know, we've got to keep going. We've got to keep on going on. We need stick to itiveness. Persistence is important, but sometimes it's easier than others, isn't it? <laughs> How do you persist? How do you persist? How do you keep going? Because there's sometimes that something is important to us and it's easy for us to persist. And there's other times when something's important that we don't manage to do it. Well, we're just back from the IMC, actually, the International Maxwell Certification event, and uh, I was speaking on day three, and I shared the story about Eliza, our daughter Eliza. Here she is. Um, if you've not, not seen her before, this is Eliza with um, my wife, Susan. This was us in Arizona a, a month or two back, uh, and Eliza's uh, had kind of a, an interesting journey. She was um, brain injured from birth, and we didn't know. The doctors told us we didn't know if she's ever going to be able to walk or talk, and so we went through this whole process. Story for another day, but we went through this whole process of trying to help her get her to walk. And it was a, a miracle, actually. And it makes a, a really good story. It's very inspiring and motivating. And people always come up after us and say, I love your story. You're such great parents. You're such great parents. And I always feel, and Susan and I talk about this afterwards, but, you know, who wouldn't, who wouldn't do what it took for their daughter? You know, I don't know whether that's necessarily, you know, us being great parents other than, you know, you're supposed to be there for your kids, aren't you? <laughs> it's, it's easier, actually, to do for your kids. And, and isn't it interesting how often we can do things for other people that we wouldn't do for ourselves. So if you need me, I'll be there for you. But I perhaps wouldn't be there for myself in the same way. It's interesting, isn't it? It's a lot easier to put your dog on a diet than it is to go on a diet yourself. It's a lot easier to make your kids eat healthily than, than it is to, you know, to, to eat healthily yourself, maybe. So is it, I think it's interesting that the world sometimes will do more for other people than we'll do for ourselves. Then after me on um, stage on day three, right directly afterwards, in fact, I snapped this picture with a, coming out the green room, just like, in fact, backstage, it was dark, neither of us could really see, but Jamie Kearns Lima, who is a has a phenomenal story she um she uh, I, I think she sold her company eventually she but started this cosmetic company she sold it for 1.2 billion 1.2 billion so she started it in her home and built it up and then sold it for 1.2 billion that's a lot of money isn't it to most people <laughs> but she tells the story on stage of, of how she did that how she got there and all of the rejection she got and you th talk about persistence my goodness and uh, she tells her story and it's very, very moving. And at the end, when she finally got a break after years of trying and countless, you know, no, 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 you're not the right shape. You can't do this. This will never sell. Your product is nothing. You know, it's like an incredible story. She gets a shot on QVC and she wants to take her makeup off live on stage to show her skin condition. She's got this like red blotchy skin, which is why she developed the makeup in the first place to kind of deal with this. And she wanted to help other people with this. And she said that she was picturing a, um, a middle-aged housewife somewhere around America and the, the, the back of beyond struggling with, you know, with different skin conditions. And she wanted them to feel special. She wanted them to know they were beautiful. And she said she would have rather done that than sold any amount of product. That was her kind of goal. And then when you think about it, again, she wasn't doing it just for herself. She was, but she knew the difference it made to her when she created this for, um, for her skin. And she knew there was a need for it, even though everyone kept telling her. So again, when you're doing something for somebody else, I think sometimes it's easier to persist than it is than when we're doing it for ourselves, isn't it? There's this great quote from um, Albert Schweitzer who said, only those of you who find a way to serve your fellow man 
will ever really be truly happy. Only those of you who find a way to serve your fellow man will ever really be truly happy. Isn't that great? I love that. I think there's something in that. I really feel like, you know, this is maybe Maslow's triangle right at the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the self-actualizing. You know, when we find meaning like that, when it's something bigger than us, something greater than us, it really makes a difference, doesn't it? Only those of you who find a way to serve your fellow man will ever truly be really happy. So why do you want to be a speaker? Think about that. Why do you want to be a better speaker? Why do you want to be a better communicator? What, what's driving you? Can you attach meaning to that? Because if you can find a way to do it for something bigger than just you, you can find a way to do it for other people. If you can find a way to do it to serve, then it makes all the difference in the world. And maybe that's what's going to make the difference. If you haven't been successful in the past, could be lots of reasons for that. I don't think it's your fault personally. I don't think it's your fault if you haven't been successful in the past. We'll talk about that and another day, how you've been lied to about your speaking in the past. But can you find a way to create meaning? Can you find a way to create meaning and, and, and particularly helping other people? Because if you can do that, I think you're going to be successful. It's just a matter of time. That's it for this week. Thanks so much for, um, for tuning in, as I said. Um, please share the link, speaking360.com. Uh, we've had lots of people join and, and uh, subscribe to the channel. But we mentioned this uh, the last couple of weeks. Please subscribe to the channel. And the numbers of like subscribers has doubled. So thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for sharing the link, sharing the love. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless.